I think the the book world and like in general is very insulated also. We think that like you know, oh my God, within ourselves only we talk so much about books, and then we forget that that this other world around us that like doesn't really talk about books as much. How do you find those books? Listen to people who you know also read. So, for example, um, I would look at Goodreads. The idea really is that you need to find the good translators. So, for example, the Daisy Rockwells of the world who. Translate amazing book. She won the International Book of Prize as well last year. Hello, Smriti. Uh, welcome to the Bohemian Project. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here in this podcast. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, or should I give you a brief? In- should I give a brief introduction of yours? Uh, I mean, you can you can give an introduction. I don't know what you're going to say, so I'm curious. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Smriti, uh, you read books and you review a lot of them. I think that's uh, some set <laughs> up. Yeah, uh, you have you go on Instagram by the name of Sant Reads, and you have a semi-successful YouTube channel wherein you also review books and talk about books a lot. And you have also yeah, and you also have an uh, kinda sort of uh, blog which is mostly inactive. And I am <laughs> right. and i'm pretty sure that because of you and because of your recommendation and because of your uh, the way you present your reviews a lot of people might have picked up some book or some genre that they might not be aware of so that is exactly the point where I, where i would like to start like how uh, has because not everyone can read a book and people have already written books about how to read a book and the reviewing books uh, is in itself a skill uh, which a lot of people cannot do and uh, uh, i would like to start with that as well like how did your personal journey as a reader started i know that your mother has a lot of influence in that and uh, when and when what was that uh, particular moment when you decided that okay you should share your thoughts on books with other people and how has your journey as a reviewer evolved over time ah uh, okay so um i guess for me i've always sort of sort of read uh, my parents um thought that reading was really important because it was important to them uh my father was a grocery trader so my mother um so i have always said this i had no books and toys um so <laughs> that's how i sort of grew up in in life um and yeah i guess the, the reading is sort of like what helps is to see when you see other people reading you want to pick up the book as well so i always saw my parents read so um that sort of made me want to read as well and and i guess the more you read the the more the better you figure out what you actually like um and that's what i did through the years and uh, yeah that's how i was always a sort of reader uh, per se obviously like it dropped off in between when you start work and college and stuff but you always have that little bit of um, a thing to go back to because it's your safe space um as for how i started reviewing books is actually a very funny story um i used to post on instagram a lot actually as like me generally because instagram was a thing uh and my friends started knowing me as a person who just talk about food uh i would <laughs> i would only be posting about the food that i was eating so in my head i was like i need a rebrand <laughs> so i started posting about books <laughs> and then uh yeah then i realized that there was a thing called bookstagram so i started a new account called suntreen um and uh yeah then there was no like looking back for it so that started that was about like 8 9 years ago and hmm. yeah. so talking from talking about foods to talking about books i think that's a genuine segue <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, I need to rebrand myself because every time I meet <laughs> my friends, they'll be like, "Acha, aaj kya khaya tumne?" And I'm like, "Please stop it, guys. I don't want to have these conversations about food. I would rather talk about other things." So that's why I was like, "Book." But yeah. <laughs> That I think my... that's the concept of a lot of cafes. That's that's the concept of a lot of cafes. You eat and you read. You pay the yeah. bill and you that's are exactly on your way. That's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I do. I go to cafes <laughs> and I read. and i eat but i talk about the books i don't talk about the food that uh, that brings me to a topic that i wanted to discuss i don't know i i i was thinking of bringing the topic to the towards the end of the episode but uh, since you brought this up uh, i recently had an incident on instagram there's this uh, instagram page called humans mm-hmm. of cinema i i don't know if you are aware of it so right. they posted a review of this movie called sitaraman 
and i i i watched that movie uh, a while back and i said that it it's an okay movie it didn't float my boat or something like that there was this one particular guy who uh, uh, who trashed me over there uh, he went to my he go he went to the length of going to my profile he looked he commented on every post of mine on instagram trash talking me that you are the worst oh person ever that was something that was new to me and you post on instagram on a regular basis and art is subjective right uh, unless yeah. or until you are talking about 50 shades of gray art is very subjective and <laughs> right and how do you like have you ever had a person come up to you like that in instagram and how do you deal with that kind of criticism I honestly think it's a little funny. Um, obviously, you do deal with a bunch of things like this sometimes, where people get very heated up about a certain thing, where it may not be up to your speed, but it's something that they love. And I just think I've had this happen to me a couple of times in the past, but it's fine. Like you agree to disagree, and that's about it. Like you just say like, "Hey, please don't waste your time on me. I'm not worth it. Uh, <laughs> please do better things in life." um and if they still don't understand then just block them in the past uh, i i don't know where but you have mentioned that you don't like frederick bachman uh, i am pretty sure you might have gotten hate for that as well i did I why did. don't you like frederick bachman uh, and it i, I sh- before you answer i should mention that because of you i have put off uh, reading this book no 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 okay so i'll tell you what i don't hate frederick bachman i only read one book of his and i didn't think it was very good that is all i was just like i don't understand the hype behind him is all i said it was a book called a man named uba uh, which has now become a movie with tom hanks and everyone loved it and i was like okay let me read it and it was good but i also felt like it was uh, my my criticism was i felt like it was um very obvious in what it was trying to do in terms of pulling your heart strings and in it didn't feel very genuine to me but a lot of other people have loved it so i'm like why will i hate on you i don't hate you i just didn't like your book and that's fine other people like it a lot in fact it's been like people have spent a lot of money to make it into a movie so I'm sure it's amazing, but uh, yeah, I didn't like it, and that's fine. I think uh, Paulo Coelho is like that. Uh, I I don't know if you would agree with me. What was his famous book here, right? I Alchemist. I don't know why people hype it so much. Uh, it's it's okayish at best. It's because it's a book that everyone loved, and then you read, and you were like, oh, okay, it's not bad, but it's not good. But because everyone loved it, you were also like, "Oh my God, it's so good!" Uh, because you didn't want to sound dumb or like you didn't want to be like, "Oh, I didn't understand the philosophy behind it" or whatever. So even I've done this. Even I've done this as a younger person when I was like, "Oh yeah, this book is amazing." It's like I was like, "Please." Now that I like think about it, I'm like, "Listen, I can't do like philosophy. I studied literature in college and in school, and I don't like books that like." go into these i was talking about a tree but actually i was talking about the decaying like world that we live in i think i liked his 11 minutes more than any other book i think that at least had some had some substance i have not read anything else of follow hello i tried reading this one book called viranaka was to die and then i have joked many times that it felt like i wanted to die <laughs> <laughs> that bad huh? that that bad but honestly i mean a lot of people he was he was multi billion book selling person for a reason so i'm sure it's struck a chord with a lot yeah, of people uh, or could be the bar for philosophy books or slice of life books is set so low that uh, anything uh, like even if that book has one piece of line that uh, people like they like hype that book way too much i think of all the philosophy books that i've read uh, only one only one line out of all the philosophy books that i fondly remember and that is something that i ponder over often uh, there is i 
I'll make it a point to make a po- topic of discussion whenever I'm among with my friends or colleagues. And the line is uh, by this uh, philosopher called Jillian Rose. Uh, the book's name is Love's uh, Work. And the line is, uh, there is no democracy in any love relationship. There is only mercy. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. And I, and I bring it up every time whenever I'm discussing anything with anyone. This sounds so cool. Yeah. It's a great line. I can I can understand why you want to bring it up. Uh, what are your reading preferences? What are the things that uh, like give you chills down the spine? Books or genres or anything in general? Books or genres? Um, I don't know. I think I uh, have found it over the years that I gravitate towards very well written book so like i love mm. like a literary uh like you know when, when people can string words together and make it like really powerful um even if it is simply written i find that to be really smart and i, I look for stuff like that more um i also love character driven books um so anytime you read a book and you find that like you know the character very very deeply um, so, for example, there's this uh, book called Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason that I read last year. Um, and it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't really have like a plot per se. It's basically following this woman in her 40s as she's like going through mental health stuff and like she's, how her marriage is breaking up and she's talking about her and her family and like the people who she loves and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But um, it's just very fun in a way, in, in the way that she writes, uh, the author, but also it's, it's, um, it painted these, a picture of these characters that sort of become very real to you. Um, so I feel like that was, is something that I gravitate towards now, more in terms of, not in terms of plot or mm-hmm. <laughs> anything more of really a now, more but of a more in terms study. of. Yeah, character studies and of like beautiful writing. Um, so I don't, I don't know, lines per se or books per se or genres, it doesn't really matter per se. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just that. So be it, um, a, like contemporary book or a historical fiction or a fantasy or mm-hmm. whatever it may be or a thriller. Um, I just look for good characters and good writing. That's basically <laughs> my number one criteria these days. But how do how do you find such books? Because uh, if you go on Goodreads, I don't know what has happened to Goodreads. It has become a it has become the one of the worst place to find a good book recommendation. Like how do you find? And even if you go to a bookstore like Crossford or any fancy bookstore, uh, the top best sellers you will see what is uh, trending on Instagram or. Uh, some other weird platform. So how do you find those books? I mean, for me, um, I think it's to like listen to people who you know also read. So for example, back when I wasn't following Goodreads, I mean, I wasn't following people on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Um, I would look at Goodreads. I would look at, uh, for example, a book that I read um, and I would look at what other people had to say and of that book. So if I liked what they had to say about the book, then I would go and see what other books they've reviewed um, and see what they had to say. So I would basically then follow them. So each time I would see what they have written or I would occasionally go and see which book they've given a five star to or whatever. Um, Then I would go and pick up that book because I was like, okay, you know, like all of these things that I look for in a book, I know you look for it too, you know, and you value the same thing. So that's, basically what I've done and over the years obviously like ever since I've joined Bookstagram and like you know Booktube and all of that sort of stuff you follow people who do this on the regular you know who make content about this sort of stuff who tweet about it even or whatever you know um and then and they give you like a good idea as to what this book is about and even if like for example I know some like content creators who say like this book sucks I hate it because it doesn't have a plot. It's only character driven and it's only good writing. Then I'm like, very good. This is what I want. <laughs> so even if you hated it because of that, I like, I will like it because of that. You know? So I think it's, it's good to uh, understand that as well. So 
so you... the long winded answer is essentially follow people who talk about books that's what it is mm, uh, right so you you have a very extensive uh, rating system uh, like can ah. you, yeah can you just walk uh, like people through that because uh, your rating system is something i have copied and i use it extensively in my life whenever i have to review not just books but uh, any movie or anything like that are you talking about my excel sheet or like <laughs> what are you talking about because i have uh... yeah your excel sheet yes yeah my excel sheet is ginormous i love excel sheets i'm a very i'm a very type b person in general but uh, i'm very type a when it comes to my excel sheets i love my excel sheets so yeah um in terms of i have a big ass extensive like excel sheet where i sit down and see each and every book that i've read and i have like certain criteria that i follow and try to see so basically it's called corp pile um which is not mine thing but essentially uh it's borrowed from a bunch of people um and i basically rank a book on a scale of 1 to 10 with 10 being the highest on what i think of characters uh the atmosphere the writing the plot the pacing the intrigue the logic and my enjoyment so <laughs> and that all comes together in the end um and i rate it and then i gave it a rating in the end you are the only person i know who has this whole rating system down to a t uh, who like i i don't know anyone who reads books and make an excel sheet out of it you would be you would be surprised there are lots of people like me but uh, yeah i am also a little uh, insane you also do a thing on instagram called the worst books of the year uh, i think that is your way of doing razis for books yes i do do this uh so people do this bracket thing um where they would uh bring up like you know talk about the best book they've read in that right. month and then so for example the best book that i've read in the month is book a and then um in feb it's book b right so then it'll be book a versus book b um and i saw a lot of people doing best uh but i decided to do worst because i'm just like salty like that and i'm like people need to know worst because <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot so, of books out there there are terrible books um so yeah so i was just like you know i just decided to do it for fun um and i've been doing it for two years now so it's it's fun uh, i do like worst of the book bracket uh <laughs> yeah, I, and yeah, yeah i think just, this is what i think this is what we are talking about yes oh my god correct that is a very uh, fun way fun way to like take out your anger on the worst of the worst out there this is like, true and it's also like really fun to sometimes just be like if i really had to choose between the worst of the worst what would it be because sometimes it's just like you know you're choosing between two equally terrible books and you're just like oh my god how can i like i think last year itself i had this one time where when in two months i had to cho- i chose like this mitch album book only by the way very fun like this thing but i chose a mitch album book versus the spanish love deception and then in the next time when i had to vote i was like no 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 the spanish love deception was worse so <laughs> people were just like in the previous one you literally chose over these two you chose this mitch album book stranger in a life boat or some shit and it was so bad oh my god it was so bad was there any book out there that put you off reading like it was the absolute worst uh, like you could not pick any book after that for a while has that happened to you yeah i mean for a while i would say okay so i was living in jakarta for a year um and in jakarta you don't really get books um <laughs> like in english you get them in the in bahasa indonesia um so the english speaking books were very expensive so the ones that came were only like international bestsellers so i got a dan brown book uh, um and it was called something inferno inferno lost uh, symbol angels and demons yes i think it was inferno i think it was inferno, inferno. it was a, and like the end just pissed me off so much i was <laughs> so like i and because you i spent so much money on this book okay 
I had spent so much money on this book. I was working for a not-for-profit. I was just like, <laughs> I was so angry that like I wanted to throw it. And my, and I, I feel like my, my, my teammates, they were all, yeah, my teammates were all around me. They were like, why are you in such a bad mood? I was like, this book sucks. So they were like, stop reading it. I was like, no, I spent money on it. I have to read it. So the reason I asked you this question, so this thing happened with me. Uh, there was this book, uh, Greda. It was in, uh, I read a Hindi translation of that book. It was by Sharachan Chattopadhyay. Uh, the original book is in Bengali. I read the Hindi translation and I picked it up at a railway station. So I don't know who translated that book or something, but I read that book. It took me six months to finish that book. And after oh, that, no. I, yes, it was so bad. Uh, I think you, after reading a single page of that book, I used to say, Kya, nahi ho Mujhe, I need to like vent out or something. It was so horribly bad. And after that, I oh, could not God. pick, after that, I could not pick anything for the next couple of months. And uh, prior to that, I used to read at least one book a week. Uh, that was my like rate at that time. After that, I have uh, come down to like reading, uh, the next year I read only 10 or 12 books that entire year. Uh, so I was uh, on one of the episodes of this uh, podcast. I was talking with a friend. Uh, she was also into uh, books and everything. So we were discussing this. Thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, she her native tongue is Telugu. So we were discussing this thing, and mm. we both came to a conclusion that uh, the translation of books that come from different regional languages to either Hindi or English, in India at least, it is horribly like they are done horribly. Oh, I don't agree to that at all. In fact, I mean. I do this thing where I I encourage people to read translated Indian books because there are some which are done really well. Um, sure, there are some translations like I've read this book like Premchand's Godan in Hindi. Um, I mean, from Hindi to English. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a terrible translation. It was a great why book. Would, but you why could, would you read you that in English? That the, because I can't read in Hindi, okay? I mean, I can, but it's very <laughs> slow. So, <laughs> I would just be like, hey, Bhagwan, kya ho hai? Like, I would just be going very, very slowly with it. So, I was like, it's okay. I'll read it in English because that's just a language that I'm more comfortable with in reading. And that's fine. But the translation that I read was terrible, you know? But that's fine. I still, I still understood what I was trying to say. But then I've read other translations that are absolutely amazing. And I think the... The idea really is that you need to find the good translator. So, for example, the Daisy Rockwells of the world who mm. translates amazing books. She won the International Booker Prize as well last year. Then, like, Arunavasana, there are so many great people, like, um, doing some amazing work. Anirudh, uh, something, forgetting his surname now. But he just got uh, his book with uh, Perumal Morgan just got um, nominated again, shortlist, longlisted for the International Booker Prize. First ever Tamil book to get like longlisted. Mm, right. So like, I don't think that like Indian translated books are many. There are lots of amazing books that like, for example, may be written in different languages. Like I won't understand Bangla, but you know, I get to read something that comes from there and that's great. So you just need to find the right translators and the right books. Then I will put this thing a little bit differently is that ki, uh, in India, finding a, there are not a lot of good translators and finding a good translation, translation of any regional book is very hard to find. Not really. We have a lot of great translators. Of good translators of what? Any regional book to, let's say, Hindi or English. Mm-hmm. Or some other language, some other, one regional language to some other regional language. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't know much about like regional language. So, for example, I know all the translators when, when it, no, I don't know all, but I know some translations when it comes to English because that's what I read. But, um, yeah, I mean, maybe regional language translations isn't such a big thing, but I'm sure if you, you should, basically what you should do is you should find a good one good translator, one good translator, okay, and then just read all of their books that they've translated. Because usually what happens is that they choose good books as well. Right. So, for example, I always look forward to any books that like Jerry Pinto translates. Because I think Jerry Pinto is amazing. Like, and plus like he, they put so much of time into translating. So, they choose good books as well. So, like, it's like you trust their taste. 
Yeah. Plus, it helps that Derry Pinto is himself a very good writer. Exactly, exactly. But like, so for example, but then like Arunava Sinha is not a writer himself, but he's a great translator. Or Daisy Rockwell is not a writer herself, but she's a great translator. And like, you know, they've done an amazing job. So I always look for what books they are translating and then just read them. And then I'm okay. <laughs> I don't want to read a translation and that is the only reason I uh, I bought that uh, Tombs of Sand book in Hindi like in original Hindi Reet Samadhi uh, Yeah Samadhi. yeah yeah I mean <clears throat> if you can read the book in like its original language that's the best thing that can happen right like if that's something that is possible then that's the best thing that can happen but if you can't and if you are more comfortable mm-hmm. reading it in um like another language then that's also fine because um sometimes fine you may not hit on like a great translation but most of the times from my experience at least there are some great translations out there huh. so i think yeah. i yeah i think uh, the best indian translation of any book i have uh, read are by one you mention is jerry pinto and another is by pawan singh who translates all of gulzar's book uh like uh, nice so all of gulzar pawan singh is the go to translator for all of them. i think other than these two i i have not come across any of the good translators so if i can uh, i will try to read them either in hindi if i can yeah no that's great you should and but also if there is any like you should follow lit with indian lit <laughs> which is that <laughs> that's a thing which i uh, do every april in fact where i promote indian translated books so huh. see some of the books that people have reviewed there and um, yeah maybe you find something that is interesting um if you do wish to read the book in english because that's mostly what i read so that's what i, I talk about i i have also turned off from a lot of indian books like i i think for me to go out of my way to read an in like a book by an indian author uh, it has to come with raving reviews I think Durjoy the Pen yeah. Ravin Singh's of the world have uh, like destroyed Indian uh, books for me. Uh I mean sure I I I see what you mean by that but I think that um there are so many great writers you know which we haven't really heard of so if you follow for example the JCB prize or mm-hmm. the Jhalak prize or the DSP prize or whatever you see so many great like indian books that come out um and i make it a point to like see for example what penguin is coming out with or with harper collins or whatever um and they always end up having some great books so um i think like for example if you follow again i'll go back to this again and again but if you for example follow some people um who read a lot of indian books and who are then like kind of doing the the thing for you whether like this is good this is bad right. you know uh, <laughs> so i feel like yeah so i follow those sort of people so for example there's this person called padmaja on uh, mm-hmm. instagram the bookish tales and there's this other girl called khyati uh, you know who who they put they read a lot of indian books so i make sure that i follow them and see um, you know what they have to say but as for like durga gata and like you know all of these people i think they're fine in their own regard you know i feel like again like i used to hate on chetan bhagat and like you know all of these people in the past where i would be like oh my god why are people reading such like terrible things in life and now i'm just like it's okay as long as they're reading you know because like even we grew up reading terrible things in life uh, and then we learned and then we our taste developed as i said uh so yeah so that's that's my hope that people can start reading gujar jata as long as like they get happiness and like you know contentment and hopefully they will uh like go on to reading better book yeah but don't in my experience like or in what i see around me i don't see that transition happening from gujar jata to let's say gabriel garcia marquez i mean it takes time it's okay even like i was still in college and i was reading like john grisham and like uh, i don't know you know really whatever books i was reading like the devil was prada lady's books and like lauren weissman and like you know it's fine i was reading sophie kinsella when i was still in college because i was like you know i have to read shitty books at, at like i mean not shitty books really good books uh in college such as like 
such a long journey by Rohit and Mystery, and I was like, bro, I this is great and all, it's amazing, but बहुत रोना धोना है. Please let me read some chiclet and feel happy in life. Do you recall the first book that you ever read? The first book was probably like Panchatantra or something. Panchatantra were like Indian fables. So, like you know, like those were the things that I remember reading. There was also this as a kid. There was this thing called Karadi Tales, uh, which were like things about this bear and something. And uh, back when audio books didn't exist, Karadi mm-hmm. Tales had this audio, like an audio CD yes, that they okay. would give. Yeah, like an audio, like a set or CD or whatever. Um, and it was uh, the book was narrated by Nasir Din Shah. <laughs> and i was just like nice. you know as a kid yeah as a kid i didn't i didn't know who nasiruddin shah was but like his voice is amazing yeah. right and he can he yeah he acts it out so you're like whoa this is something <laughs> else like they're talking about like these like bears going on these walks and all but like it sounds amazing so i was like oh okay this is cool uh and yeah so i, I remember really loving karadi tales and like Years later, years, years later, um, I bumped into him, and the first thing hmm. I was like, "Oh my God, you read our Karadi <laughs> tales!" And he was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Normally, people talk to me about other things in life, but you're like Karadi tales. I was like, "Yeah, it is so good." <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, the first book that I ever read But, was this Goosebump series. Uh, Give yourself Goosebump by R. L. Stein. Oh, that was the first. Yeah, Goosebump. Yeah, that was the first one I ever read, and I don't know why my uh, everyone in my family used to think that I read a lot. And that was not the case because this R. L. Stein book Goosebump series, the first book I read, I was in tenth standard. That was the first time I ever mm. read a book, and before that, I don't know why my oh parents God. had that impression that uh, I I read a lot. Post that, my next book was Brida by Paolo Coelho. Hmm. Wow, so that from, is quite a jump. <laughs> yeah. So from Ayala Stein to uh, Brida. That next is uh, <laughs> that is quite a jump. No, no, mine was. I think I read Goosebumps when I was in second, third standard. Uh-huh. <laughs> third standard maybe <laughs> and then i jumped to uh i don't know what i jumped to but something or the other i must have jumped to uh yeah but goosebumps was a thing goosebumps was definitely mm, yeah. nancy drew and hardy boys and like all of that or sweet valley sweet valley high i don't know all of these books Whenever I talk with someone or who But, is an avid reader like you, uh, they always mention Nancy Drew and Sweet Valley High, and I always have to yes. make a disappointed face because I have not read a single book of Hardy Boys or Nancy Drew. It's fine. I mean, everyone goes through their things. It's like you know when, um, like I don't know. Now we'll talk about like watching Friends, and then someone will be like, "Oh, you never watch Friends?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> You know, so it's okay. It's like everyone went through their own journey. Yeah, but uh, yeah. we yeah we have talked a lot about what we don't what we didn't don't like in books or something. Uh, what are the best books or what are the authors that you diligently follow? For me, it was Gabriel Garcia Marquez when he was still alive. I think I'm a hardcore Jhumpa Lahiri and uh, Vikram Seth fan. um those are the two people like i i have a entire bookshelf dedicated to them uh like a book part of my like it's like one like it's like this weird creepy part of my book i wish i had like that picture or something but no uh i love the way that they write um and uh, those are two favorites um who i ardently love um apart from that i mean in terms of jumpa lehri my favorite book of hers is um on a custom door um mm-hmm. and of course vikram seth all time favorite is a suitable boy so that is that is just um they just i just think they do really well in terms of like writing in terms of like you know the stories that they have to tell and the characters that they etch out like vikram seth a suitable girl is like a suitable boy is like this long spanning really thick book you know about right. you know family and different sort of people in their lives and um then we have jhumpa lehri who writes amazing short stories so 
um it's just the sort of things that they both can do i just think is very like fascinating um and yeah i just i've grown to like really enjoy their writing in general um apart from that who are the other two other authors that i love um i've unfortunately not read too much of gabriel garcia marquez i read one you book should. of his last you, you, you should yeah uh, he i read the, 100 me, years he... of solitude one eh, that 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 i don't think that is his best work best personally. i nice. think his yeah i think his best work is love in the time of cholera another would be oh uh, interesting yeah another would be chronicles of a death foretold and then uh, 100 years of solitude ah. yeah. and then uh, this solitude book nice i think for me he nice. is the he is the greatest writer that ever was and i don't think anyone can match that for me that least that's cool no i plan to uh, read more of him for sure i think um another author i mean jerry pinto uh, i just really like the way that he tells stories as well i'm naming all like indian people only no <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> maybe it's because you've gone so hard on indian <laughs> authors i'm like no no wait there are lots no, of no, great no. indian authors <laughs> no like no 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 in my brain that's all that is coming only indian authors i went um, i went yes. hard on durjay dattas and ravindra singhs of the world not on every indian author it's i like fine. jerry i like jerry pinto i know Jerry Pinto is amazing. Um, another Indian book that I'm going to mention um, is a book called Tamas by Bhishma Sahani. Uh, this is also translated, translated by the author and then by Daisy Rockwell. So two translations hmm, right. of this. Um, and it's about the partition, and it's uh, based on like his own experiences of what he saw when he was traveling through the partition. And it's a book that uh, has never left me. <laughs> it's amazing, um, and just like it just. sticks with you um if you want like light sort of books then i love the thursday murder club by richard osman mm-hmm. um he writes about like these um 70 year olds who live in a retirement village in in england and uh, they start off by like solving murders because one of their partners was an ex cop um and they would meet to try to solve murders but then a murder actually does happen <laughs> and then they try to solve that murder and then they get themselves into like all of these things um and it's very cute what else i don't know i have to think about it ah there's a book called maggie o'farrell i really like her um she's written a book called hamnet oh james baldwin how could i forget james baldwin has never like disappointed me ever he's amazing um he's a black author from back in the day um and he right amazingly just like spectacular writing spectacular characters um and great plot so i love james baldwin a while back you mentioned hamnet uh, hamnet reminded me of another author called madeline miller i don't know if you have heard of yes her. oh my god madeline miller is amazing she's so good uh, there was this guy on youtube who uh, who does movie who does book reviews uh, he mentioned about madeline miller and uh, uh, hamnet and that's when i got to know okay there are certain authors out there as well who are not uh, who are yet who are not yet discovered as much as other contemporary writers oh i mean madeline miller is super famous now song of achilles is just like just taken off mad but a lot of people still don't know about that mm yeah yeah for sure for sure i think the the book world and like in general is very insulated also you know yeah. um i feel like we think we think that like you know oh my god within ourselves only we talk so much about books and then we forget that that is other world around us that like doesn't really talk about books as much so they don't quite know so that's why they're stuck with the same old Amish. You know, I, I forgot to mention. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, there is a particular reason I asked you to mm. be on this podcast. I talk with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and artists and sportsmen and people who have actually figured out what their niche is, because I'm in. I'm on the wrong side of my thirties and I'm trying to figure that out now. 
so uh, and oh, a lot and a lot and almost all of them had one thing in common is that they read a lot at least or at least they try to mm. read a lot and the reason one of the right. reason that i asked you to be on the podcast is because you read a lot and a lot of artists and entrepreneurs read a lot so i thought ki okay uh if i can uh, combine these two world maybe it will be a good conversation to have and i learned a lot yeah. I, i got i got to know a lot uh most may, maybe i ne- might need to revisit my stand on indian authors and uh, translations yes you should <laughs> yes you should yeah there are a lot no. of in- bad indian writers uh okay i i'll But tell you sure, but there are a lot of bad like english authors as well but uh, it's yeah. fine we have we have the good we have the bad and then we find the good amongst it all uh, anyways uh, uh, one more thing uh, before we wind up just one more thing i i probably know the answer for this but uh, what do you prefer like hard book or uh, a kindle of sorts or ebooks oh surprisingly kindle i am <laughs> kindle <laughs> weirdly very weirdly even Why? though i am surrounded i am surrounded by like actual hold in your hand book wait but i think i i think i read faster on a kindle and plus like i don't know it's just easier to carry around and i've just gotten used to it way more um i genuinely think that i read way faster on a kindle and i find it like easier um i gravitate more towards it nowadays i don't know why but like yeah i i, I have a lot of my friends weirdly who have also become this way where we bo- we all just sort of gravitate towards our kindle these days instead of like actual books maybe we are just old and we don't feel like holding things we just feel <laughs> <laughs> like chota hai haath mein aa gaya hai chota hai main budha ho gaya hu ha mujhe nahi pakadna itna mota look at this it's so big it's so heavy mujhe nahi pakad like it's if i hold it i'm like yaar <laughs> mere liye kaafi but hai. like kindle ha exactly and plus with kindle it's like so reo to matlab lights be off ho sakte hain and you know so it's all yeah I've become weirdly a kindle person 70 years back i pestered everyone almost everyone i know that okay you should give me a kindle my birthday is coming up you should give me a kindle and on that on the on that birthday i got two kindles <laughs> i had to return one of them oh my god <laughs> Oh my god. You know what's funny? My best friend gave gifted me a Kindle and I was like, "Oh no, she's given me a Kindle tea." <laughs> and now I'm like, "Bro, Ranjini, you've changed my life. I swear to god." <laughs> I'm like, "Ranj, you really changed it. I am only reading on Kindle these days." Kindle. Like if you see Abdullah stats, right? I stats. My stats for like last year, I think I read 60% of my books on my kindle hmm. funny thing you mentioned that because in my 8 years of uh, on 8 years of life as owning as being a kindle owner i have not read a single book on kindle oh my god <laughs> no no it happened with me initially also even i was like chi and then and the magic happened i don't know what happened but something happened and then i was like full kindle <laughs> See I think owning yeah. a ha- owning a ha- like owning a book like physical copy of a book that is also mm-hmm. a very show off thing and being a north indian yeah. I I personally believe in showing off <laughs> <laughs> No no I to fully agree but like okay I'll tell you what I do right sometimes when I for example if I love a book so for example I read this book called How the One Armed Woman Sweeps the house i think it's by that's, this like that's it's a, a very title weird like weird title but like i loved it i loved it so much that i bought the book you know what i mean so i read it on my kindle first and i was like oh my god i love this book so much i need to like have it in my hand so then i bought it so that's become my thing now nowadays like i try to like buy less books and just have like ah. kindle versions because as i live in bombay okay bombay mein jagah nahi hoti life mein like if you've seen my jagah nahi hai right ghar pe jagah nahi hai so like i have if you see my entire like this thing is only book there jagah nahi hai anymore so i can't do it so i have to like 
Kindle, the way to go. And if I like it very much, then I buy it. I don't think I will ever buy a book on Kindle. The reason being, I uh, like when I first got this Kindle, I had I had a small community of people who used to read books, and at that time, uh, piracy used to be a thing. So I still have a dedicated Dropbox folder wherein all the all <laughs> I I think there are three thousand or four thousand odd books on that Kindle on that Dropbox folder. So I don't think even if I go on reading from a Kindle, I don't think I'm ever going to uh, buy a book. But piracy is bad. Okay, give the authors the money. Anyway, yeah, now, they don't make money. Yeah. I I think that's the reason. Uh, that's I think I should add that to the list of reason why I don't read books on Kindle. अच्छा प्लीज तो तो बाय द बुक ऑन किंडल यार चलेगा और दिस नॉनसेंस आई हैव अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वे टू बाय बुक्स आई लुक एट द कवर लुक एट द कवर ऑफ दिस थिंग द ओनली रीजन आई बॉट दिस बुक इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस कवर या या बाइंग बुक्स बाय इट्स कवर्स अ टोटल थिंग लाइक लुक एट दिस दिस इज लाइक लुक इट्स सो इट्स सो प्रीटी इट्स सो एंड लुक एट द एजेस आल्सो ब्लैक वाओ Like oh, so nice. So when people say you should not judge a book by its cover, you should definitely judge a book by its cover. Sometimes, so you have to. Sometimes you really have to. Before you wind up, uh, anything that you would want to plug? No, no. Just um, read translated Indian literature. <laughs> uh, it's great. <laughs> read Indian books, regardless. <laughs> Don't pirate your books. <laughs> give the money to your authors unless i would say only only pirate books if it's by like a rich white man okay <laughs> if it's a, by a rich white man pirated no problem hey nicolas is pack also need your money man, hey please he can pirate uh, <laughs> he has so many like movie deals and all of that it's okay but uh, everyone else uh, by make like give the authors some money it's okay <laughs> it was nice having you here smriti uh, it was a great conversation thank it you was, thank you for coming on the podcast thank uh, you for having me great chatting with you